So the last one we're, nutrient we're going to talk about is vitamins. So first of all, what are vitamins? Again, vitamins are molecules that are required to make a metabolic process or metabolic reaction occur. Okay, but they're not actually consumed in the process of that. They're like a catalyst. Okay, and they, they, they work with enzymes or they're like a catalyst to make sure that a, a, a reaction occurs. Not all species of livestock require all the vitamins in their diet. So some can be made by the animal. Uh, vitamin C, for example, can be made by, for example, pigs can make vitamin C. We have to make sure we get vitamin C, otherwise we get scurvy, for example. Pigs, they have no re n requirement for a vitamin C in their diet because they can produce it themselves. Many of the vitamins can be produced by the ruminal microbes. So for example, vitamin B12, which is uh, uh, again important, uh, as long as we make sure we have enough uh, cobalt and we supply the, the, the building blocks for the bacteria, the bacteria in the rumen can make that for them as well. However, many times we also have, there's some we have to supply as well in the diet and some that are even usually uh, made by the bacteria, we may also supplement a little bit as well, depending on the situation that we're facing. So again, they're organic compounds, and they, but they're distinct from amino acids or carbohydrates or lipids. They're made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They all have that. Some of them also have nitrogen in there, and some of them will also have a mineral as a part of their um, structure as well. They're usually required in very, very small amounts just to maintain the normal growth and reproduction. But if we have deficiencies, you can get to reduce performance, sickness, and in some cases, even death. So again, these are, vitamins are primarily used as kind of coenzymes in the nutrient uh, metabolism. And again, the body uses them to cat, cat, as catalysts to facilitate other reactions. Uh, again, they don't get used up in the process, and so they're available to be used over and over and over again. Over time, they may wear out. Over time, they may have to be replaced. However, and that's why we have to continually be feeding uh, these vitamins. However, they don't actually become a part of the animal in terms of, for example, calcium becomes a part of the bone. The amino acid will become a part of the muscle structure, um, but uh, whereas as vitamins don't become a part of the actual structure. This is kind of an important concept to understand. We have to remember that vitamins are actually classified into either being fat soluble or water soluble. The four fat soluble vitamins are vitamin A, D, E, and K. And then the water soluble vitamins are all the Bs and C. And the reason why this becomes important is the fat soluble vitamins, if you over supplement them, they will get stored in the liver. And if the liver can no longer hold any more of them, they'll start to spill out of the liver and then you're going to have toxicity problems. A, D, E, and K, if they're overfed, will kill an animal. Okay, they can, they can be dead, dangerous, deadly for that. Whereas, for example, the water-soluble vitamins, uh, if, you, if they're consumed too many of those, they'll, because they're water-soluble, they'll just be urinated out. So it's just expensive urine if you feed too much of the Bs and C. Now, vitamin A, usually we don't feed vitamin A. Usually what we do is we feed something called beta carotene and the animal, uh, the body is able to convert beta carotene into vitamin A. Beta carotene is not toxic, okay? And it will stop. If you over supplement it, it will not then become uh, vitamin A. It'll just make as much vitamin A as the animal needs. So the real big ones that we have to be careful about are D, E, and K. Just to give you an example, uh, some animals actually have very high levels of vitamin D naturally. And I uh, remember years ago reading about some of the early explorers through the trying to find the Northwest Passage. When they got stuck in the ice, uh, they would uh, rain out of meat over the winter time. And so then they would hunt polar bears. And uh, I remember that there was a diary that one of them wrote. They, everybody on this particular ship had died while they're up there and someone found a diary. And if you read the diary, you'd, you'd be able to see that the, the, the explorers were basically slowly dying of vitamin D toxicity because polar bears have very high levels of vitamin D in their bodies and in their livers especially. So as they were eating the meat from these polar bears, they were coming down with vitamin D toxicity and dying. So again, interesting, we have to be careful that we don't over supplement those A, D, E, and K, uh, but we ha and, and uh, I mean, we don't wanna over supplement the Bs and the C either. Even with the Bs and stuff like that, you have to be aware. So for example, uh, thymine can be produced by the bacteria in the rumen and they can do it very easily, it's not a big deal. However, if you feed a diet that's high levels of sulfur, high levels of sulfur will inhibit that bacteria. And or, if you start getting into situations of acidosis, that where you're, the grain, the, the pH in that rumen is dropping off, this bacteria is very, very susceptible to, to low pH. And so if you have a situation where you're feeding, for example, um, distiller's grains, which has some sulfur in it, and, and if you're feeding a lot of grain to those animals, you could be getting kind of giving yourself a double whammy and you may start getting into issues of vitamin uh, a thymine de deficiency. 
Um, and that's why, for example, I keep always in my, it's relatively cheap, I'll have a bottle of thiamine and it just stays in my cupboard in case I need it. Uh, again, each, I'm not going to go into the details of that, but every, every vitamin has a little bit simpler um, deficiency symptoms to look for. Uh, for example, the thiamine, they stargazing, the sheep will lay splayed out with their heads tilted all the way back, uh, kind of looking up at, up at the sky. It would be a, a, a one. If you catch that soon enough, you give them a shot of thiamine and it will correct itself fairly quickly. Um, but uh, if it goes on too long, then it can cause permanent blindness in the animal as well. Now, vitamins feeds are very variable in terms of supply of vitamins. It tends to be that forages are higher than grains. It tends to be that fresher feeds are higher than stored feeds. Pasture is an excellent source of many, many vitamins. Once you cut it, dry it, some of those vitamins, uh, the term that sometimes uses are friable. They don't last very long and they'll, and they'll deteriorate relatively quickly in that. The shelf life of vitamins is quite variable. And so if you do not go buying enough vitamin min, min, uh, vitamins for a whole year, buy them basically at the shortest amount of time that you can kind of justify doing at a time. A month is great. If you start getting into two months, your vitamins are going to start be de deteriorating um, as, as they go. If you can store them in a cool location, in a dry location, that's going to be much better than a warm or a moist situation as well. This is something that uh, is kind of... Um, people don't think about probably enough and it, it's kind of, uh, I don't know how to say that, but it's, it's not a great situation, is that actually minerals will actually deteriorate, deteriorate the, the eff efficacy of the vitamins. And so how do we usually buy our vitamins? We buy our vitamins in a vitamin mineral premix, but by doing that, we're actually making it so that those vitamins are deteriorating quicker. And so again, depending on the vitamin as well, some of the vitamins can deteriorate relatively quickly and certainly within 120 days, you can really decrease the, the efficacy of those vitamins in the diet. And that's why I would again recommend tops two months at a time. You buy enough mineral for about two months at a time. Over winter, maybe you can go a little longer, three months or something like that, but don't make it too long. It's because you want them to stay uh, fresh. The other thing, pelleting. When we pellet, we're adding steam and then we're running it through a dye and the pellet gets very, very hot. Yes, we cool the pellet off as quickly as we can, but that high heat will again um, make some of the vitamins deteriorate. And so the, the pelleting has been shown to decrease the vitamins, efficacy of vitamins by about 26%. So if you're going to be pelleting a feed, if you're going to be buying a pelleted feed, maybe you want to up the levels of some of those vitamins um, accordingly as well. So again, just a very short uh, discussion on vitamins and so that we understand basically how they work and their importance.